What's up guys, John here, and I have another Modern Warfare 3 gameplay for you guys. I'm playing Infected. This is two games of Infected in a row. Not like the last Infected video where I had two gameplays of Infected and just put them together. But right now guys, I'm in a good mood because my favorite uh, college basketball team, the Duke Blue Devils, have finally won against the UNC Tar Heels today, February 8th. They won uh, in the last few seconds of the game. They won 85-84. to 84. So congratulations to the Blue Devils. Alright, so... Let's talk about some strategies for Infection. So pretty much Infection, there is no real point to go over like class specific strategies because in a way you can't really choose your own classes in the game in this game mode because it automatically gives you your class for you. So pretty much let's focus on your win loss ratio and pretty much how to survive in Infected. Granted, I won't survive that long in in these games really. But I still play really well, and I come out even, uh, not even, but I come out positive in both matches. So the way to pick, you can easily pick up wins in this game. So, because the infected will always win no matter what, unless you're actually the last person alive at the last second of the game, which I'm pretty sure uh, the remaining survivor will win, will lose anyway. The actual way to win the game, I'm sure of, is to... It's, it starts off with 18 versus 0 and then a randomized person so gets chosen to be the first infected person. So to actually win at the game, what the, you have to, when the timer goes out, is to have less infected than survivors. So that's the way to win it. But in a way, everybody wins the game no matter what. Everyone wins. Everyone becomes infected throughout the game. Because it's not too common, not that I've seen anyway, to have an infected person, I mean, excuse me, a survived person to survive throughout the entire game. I've never, I've rarely seen that happen. I actually almost did it myself, but I actually, this was actually in the last video. I actually had one when I was the last person alive surviving, and then they got me. So, to do well in infected, uh, some people usually get into glitch spots, which I think is not really that fair, but it allows you to get easy kills. I mean, the glitches are there accidentally by the creators of Marvel for 3 because they didn't find the bug, all the bugs, I'm sure, but you know, that's why they released patch, so they when they find the glitch spots, they fix it. But it allows you to get up into higher or more confined areas to where... You can gain more more uh, kills and survive for much longer in the game using those glitch areas. So, but the thing is, because the infected sometimes have throwing knives, I've actually been in matches where the infected actually didn't have a throwing knife. Or maybe it was just me. I just, I just didn't have a throwing knife at all in some games. But when they have throwing knives, it they'll get you much easier if you're like on a ledge or something, a glitch a glitched ledge or a ledge or ledge in general that you can hop on and they're not able to hop up, they'll have throwing knife and they'll just throw it at you and they'll still get you anyway. Which, I don't think throwing knife should be a part of it. Uh, I'll tell you why. Because throwing knives, you have to throw it. The infected, I, I believe they're going, what they're going for is something like a humans versus zombies sort of feel. I know I talked about humans versus zombies, I'm not going to get into that though. But, they wanted to go for humans, kind of, it's kind of the feel of that, not like it is humans versus zombies, but I mean like this the same tactic as it. But I feel that they should not have throwing knives and just use regular tack knifing because that way you know you have to get up on the player and actually get them. But I see why they've incorporated the throwing knife because it, 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 it's easier and it doesn't allow the game to drag on continuously for days or hours or whatever so I don't even think it's possible to have this game going for days. But, <clears throat> uh, another way to survive well within the game, some maps, I've not seen, I've not seen a lot of good areas in maps, but some of the maps actually have good confined corners of the map to where you can have either just yourself or maybe a teammate or two to stay with you and then have only one or two openings to where the infected can come in at you and that way you can just pick them off as they come in but be also be aware of the throwing knives again because they can still have throwing knives and they still will throw the knives at you and that's why I always say stick to the edges of the map and stick to areas along the edge of the map that have cover 
because it allows a cover and allows if they throw a throwing knife and you get behind the cover, it'll hit their hit your cover instead of you and getting you infected. And also, if you stay on the edge of the map, it will allow you to have no breach in reach in behind you so they can't flank you from behind. That way you're always at the edge of the map and you'll know what's around you and that way you know where the border is to where they can't get you. <laughs> Uh, when you choose a spot to defend from, um, bear in mind that you will have to dodge a lot of throwing knives, like I said. Uh, find a box or a railing that covers most of your body is pretty, it's pretty good strategy. Um, also, ammo. When, in this game you have, you do have an ammo count, there's no infinite ammo, but usually when you kill some infected people, you can, um, it has a, a perk. It really it, it got you gain perks within the game when you kill in the effective. So one of them is scavenger, and <clears throat> it lets you so you let let you pick up more ammo so you can reload and reload and keep going. But if you're using the shotgun, um, you'll also need to pick up more ammo because the shotgun carries less ammo. But and but it it fires short slower than a a, a machine gun or machine pistol. So if you use a machine pistol, you're going to waste the ammo faster than you want a shotgun, faster than you want a pistol. <clears throat> uh, if you aim correctly uh, with some good accuracy, you really won't waste ammo. So try and do that. Try and focus on uh, pretty much hitting your target. I know they move around a lot, guys. I know it's kind of hard to hit perfect accuracy with people moving around sometimes. But bear in mind, if you think you can't get the shot, don't go for the shot and just... You know, keep on moving, try and get out of the way, and uh, wait for a clear shot to come in. That way you don't waste any ammo in case you don't have much left. <coughs> oh, sorry, guys. <coughs> I've been having a cough lately. Like I said, I've been, uh, it's been uh, like 40 degrees here, so... Eh, you know, if I'm getting sick, I'm sorry about that. But, anyway... Um... If, um... Let me think... If usually if you spawn with a striker, the first infected person is going to spawn with a striker. So the first infected person, it gives them the ability to get, to get you at least. So if they don't have a striker or any type of gun at first, then that means that they wouldn't be able to get you as easily as they would have. That way they can that, that allows the the infected count to go up. And once there's enough infected people, I'm sure that the striker goes away and then they have to use tag nice and everything like that. Uh, one, so, but actually, it switches to tag knife after one kill. That way, you know, the infected has already started and then, you know, it'll keep keep building the count and that way there's two, two infected people and the count just keeps growing exponentially. So, when you're walking around a map during a game of, game of infection, it's a bad idea to walk aimlessly around the map. Do not do that. Do not leave your back exposed, like I said, um, which is practically open to panic knifing, which is uh, pretty much when a person comes up behind you and just stabs you in the back anyway. So be careful of that. Uh, to get the most kills and wins out of infection, you'll need to survive until the last, you're the second, second last guy. If you end up being the last guy, you'll lose the game and take a loss when they kill you. Uh, surviving long enough to rack up kills while simultaneously sa saving yourself from a loss requires you to die as the second last survivor. Being the last guy is not a good thing. It is not. Do not be the last survivor. I cannot stress that enough. But, don't worry. I'm here to protect you guys. Alright guys, that's the end of this video. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.